Oh, look at this little guy. What is he supposed to be? He's like a little kangaroo dragon of some sort. Hey, you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the West. More specifically, we spent last night here in Tucson, Arizona, and I wanted to check out this attraction that I have, I have yet to visit. This is the Mini Time Machine Miniature Museum here in Tucson, a display of miniatures, dollhouses, and, and, and little tiny tableaus. Uh, I've heard it's very interesting, so I wanted to stop by and check it out. So please, follow me. So we enter the Mini Time Machine and Miniature Museum through this giant doorway. See this door is like over 20 feet tall. I can see if I can, oh, oh I can't get it open. Oh wait, we have a tiny secret hatch right here. Oh wait, and then there's an even tinier door right here, does this, okay, this doesn't open either. Okay, we'll try door number three. Here in the lobby, we have some uh, dollhouses to start out with. See the very large, intricate, traditional dollhouse there. This here is called the Fairy Museum, so it's a little small museum within the larger museum, I guess a museum for fairies. See the little fairy there, observing the items on the rotating table there. See there's a little room full of crowns back there and then i think we have a lepre yes. leprechaun room there a little room full of treasure being held by uh by that leprechaun oh wait what's happening here I see the front of this dollhouse is opening oh look at that gaze inside and see the uh, little dolls there on the interior of the house. Really interesting. Over here by the restrooms I just noticed this. Staff and witches only. They have witches here. Now this is very interesting. It's a violin with a violin shop carved into it. See a little work desk there. Some violins hanging up there in the rafters. And what's that? Is that a uh, a cello? It's a little Pepper's One. Ghost in here. Much better. You see, this is the sort of thing that sets a miniature apart from a simple dollhouse. Whoa. Oh. Oh. Uh -oh. Yeah. It just won't. Yeah. All right, from here we enter the enchanted realm, the magic of miniatures. And look at the centerpiece here, this giant magical tree in the center of the room. And as you look around the magical tree, there's these like little tiny miniatures embedded in the tree. You can also see different faces there amongst the tree. But let's peek down here and see the miniature. A uh, little little Victorian mice there. On this side we see a frozen tree face there. The beard of ice and snow. And you can see the little miniature mice nestled in their bed. And look at the mice in here. You see the walls are uh, covered. I think those are like matchbook covers. You can see the the ground is paved with coins. Oh, well, this side of the tree has a angry face. You can see the skull right there in the trunk. Oh, see the little fairy up there. The tree, where'd it go? Where's it going? Oh, oh. Oh, look at that. Oh, there. It's in the... There's the fairy there in the little nook in the tree. Here is the Adams Family 
mini mansion, a miniature recreation of the Adams family mansion here. You can see the cemetery there in front. It's a baby carriage with uh, may, it made out of a coffin. <laughs> oh look, you can see down on the trunk of that tree there's a uh, there's thing. And of course, look up in, at the top. You can see a pot of boiling oil, which we, when they dump that on uh, Christmas carolers. Here we can see inside of the uh, Adams family mansion. There's Uncle Fester on top with a cannon. Down here, you can see Wednesday's room. She's kind of the uh, famous uh, Adams family member of the moment with her. Uh, New Netflix show. Oh, look, there's a <laughs> electric chair there, a little baby in a cage. I don't know whose room that is. There's a lion in there. Let's quick go down and see Pugsley there messing with some uh, TNT. I think, yeah, he's actually okay. He's got a little tiny train set there. And he's using his, uh, I guess, creating an explosion on the train set. You see, cousin It is visiting there in, uh, in that bedroom. We've got uh, Lurch down there in uh, in the greenhouse. And then move over to the main living room. And we have uh, Morticia and Gomez there. Looks like they're having a little dance. And yeah, I don't even, I don't even know how to react to this. It's, it's a massive collection of QBs. Why does it have to always be QBs? Oh my gosh, although I don't think I've ever seen quite a collection of QBs as this. This may be the largest grouping of QBs. You can see all their different outfits. There's the soldier, QB, who wears a hat and has a rifle, but uh, still doesn't wear any pants. <laughs> you have uh, QBs marrying each other. Oh, there's, is that more QBs getting married? Just, uh, yeah, take in all these QBs here. <laughs> Gosh. It does talk about uh, where QPs come from. This woman, Rose O'Neill, invented QPs. So they first appeared in uh, in an issue of Ladies Home Journal in 1908 and said that they were an overnight sensation. And she became a millionaire overnight. All these different uh, brands wanted to use QPs to advertise their products. Wow. Yeah, you still, you know, there still is. You know, there's the QP hamburger restaurant in in Ohio. I've seen there's QP mayonnaise still on the market. They just, uh, I guess, I guess that's the key. They didn't stick to advertising one thing. QPs, you know, were open to advertising anything. Yeah, they even have an exhibit here with some. These are modern QPs. QPs still being made today. Yeah, there probably will never be a museum of QPs, but this is probably probably the closest we'll get. We have a miniature game of dogs playing poker there. But, uh, the original painting of dogs playing poker was by a man named Cassius Coolidge. And Cassius Coolidge also invented the comic foreground, which is when you see a, like a cardboard cutout or, or painting that lets you put your face through it in order to take a photo op. He invented that and created the idea of dogs playing poker. So, man, what a... What a wizard when it comes to uh, creating pop culture icons. But dogs do more than just play poker. You can see the, the mother dog there with her uh, dog children there trying to clean up the house. Looks like the kids playing with garbage there. And dogs can be sophisticated as well. There's uh, dogs not playing poker, but uh, having a nice fancy dinner. Here's a tree with Ewoks in it. Look closely, you can see the Ewoks there. You got C-3PO there as well in a in a throne. This here is called the Southwest Animals Motorcycle Gang. You can see the little western town there. 
There's a Lenra Gulch Hotel and Saloon, and then we see the animals whizzing by on their motorcycles. There's a rat there. There's a cat. There's a frog. The top hat. <laughs> oh, what's that? Some sort of lizard there. Different lizards. Oh, look at that. Hog on a hog there. So cool. <laughs> Definitely love this. Here are Jim Rourke's Metal Monsters. Which, these are pretty interesting. Apparently he would take classic car kits where you could put together a classic car, like a model, and uh, instead he would construct them, but create them as though they were abandoned in the desert and left to rot. Yeah, I do love these. You have the old uh, station wagon there, broke down. You have this car there, the hood's popped up, the trunk's popped up. Well, it's actually for sale. It's an El Camino there. And then there is a uh, car stuck face down in a pond there, an abandoned. You can walk over top, this little Christmas village here. You actually get a chance to see a whole Christmas village from up above. You have a massive Christmas village. This is one of those commercially produced collectible Christmas villages here. See all the different, uh, all the different houses, all themed around Christmas. And this here is absolutely amazing. This is the Halloween house here. It's just so much going on in this uh, diorama. And that's one of the things I do love about miniatures that there's just so much detail that you can almost never see it all. You can see the headless horseman there. It's a little tree house with little vampires in it. Who's this guy wearing all these hats? Skeleton peeking out of the window. You have a wizard here in front of the house. Oh no, someone ran over that cat. That's horrible. A dragon here. A little cemetery. Over here is like a giant bird cage full of witches. Down here you have all these different witches. For some reason this witch is a, is a cow. And just look at all this going on inside the Halloween house. It's like they're having a Halloween party in here. There's the frog room up here. I think that's the uh, princess and the frog there. So this is Queenie, the wicked witch in this room. There's a dragon couple in here. Oh, and they've got a campfire burning in the uh, in the attic. That's not safe. The sign says this is Sybil, the medieval witch. What I'm unclear on is why she has all these old vintage <laughs> computers in her room. You got a mummy in here. There's tarot cards there on the table. Looks like a brain sitting on that plate. Oh, look at that. There's like a little little baby alligator in the dog bed. You can see the vampire in there. He's got a little table. Little tabletop full of devils there, a little devil orchestra. They have a, a king back there taking a bath in a tiny little bathtub. There's also a mermaid taking a bath there. And uh, there's little cats here, little cat mermaids. I think this is Beauty and the Beast here. Uh, it looks like the Beast from that uh, 1980s TV show. These miniatures here are made by uh, Marsha. Backstrom, and I really love these. These are so creepy. You can just see the incredible detail on the faces of the tiny witches there. And there's the coven of witches. Oh, wow. Little boat here with a frog family on the inside. And there is a chimpanzee with a boat full of supplies. Looks like he's got a few uh, other animals in there, as well as uh, Raggedy Ann and Andy. Says these are called pocket dragons. They were collectible, available from 1996 to 2003. I don't think I've ever seen these before. Yeah, you can see a dragon taking a bath in a teacup there. There's some uh, royal dragons. Oh, and there's the uh, there's the uh, 
three wise man dragons, but instead of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, it uh, looks like they're bringing jelly beans, cookies, and 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 myrrh, I guess. This is the Forget Me Not Fairy Castle here. Lots going on in here. There's even some caves there under the castle. Let me see what kind of what kind of beings are those that live under the castle. Looks like they got a little bakery there. I don't know, is that supposed to be a, a moonshine still maybe? You can see the wizard in uh, in that room there. Oh look at this this cave here. I know there's a fairy there on a boat, but if you look in the cave under the castle, there's mermaids diving off a ledge. You can see the is there like a prince and a princess in that room? And it looks like they have a a dragon skin rug. Yeah, what exactly is going on there? There's like a donkey man and then a chimpanzee angel. Here is the Academy of Enchantment. See up on the top floor, you have a wise old tree reading a book. And then down here, it looks like there's someone training a baby dragon and a fairy to fly. Here we have a display of Sherazada from Arabian Nights. This is the Sultan would kill his storyteller at the end of every night, but she told so many great tales. He never got around to killing her, and then he uh, fell in love with her and married her. Here you can see the model of the uh, of the tree in the center of the room. Fittingly enough, it originally was a miniature. Here's the three bears house. You can see the three bears there finding Goldilocks, sleeping in the tiny bed that was just right. Oh man, three angry bears. She better run. And here's a disturbing little Easter egg. The three bears have a taxidermied man head on the wall. This one's very interesting. A little skeleton kitchen there. You can see him chopping up what looks to be intestines. I don't know if you can read that. That recipe says rat a tui. And down there you got some frogs carrying a snail around on a plate. You got Raggedy Ann. And Andy there, and then a little miniature version. Just super tiny dollhouse there, it opens up like a little book. <laughs> Look at that, <laughs> a miniature version of the clumps from Nutty Professor. This is a Christmas room here. A little child asleep with their Mickey Mouse ears there on the floor. And when I first looked at this, I was a little uh, disturbed because I saw this teddy bear, which I thought had blood all over it, but no, 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 that's not blood. It's just eating a, uh, eating a, a cherry pie. Although, it's, yeah, you catch a little notice things. There's what appears to be a head in a jar there on that table. Not sure what that is. Also, I think, yeah, there's an elf spying in the window there watching, watching, uh, the child's sleeve. Here's the Gone with the Wind room. I've uh, still not gotten around to watching this movie. Have Geppetto there with Pinocchio as a little marionette. Some kids there watching the super violent uh, Punch and Judy show. This here is the history gallery. You see this giant dollhouse here. It says that the creator of this dollhouse actually based it on his own home. I think that'd be really cool to have a dollhouse version of your own home. This house here is from 1775. You can see it's actually built like almost as a piece of furniture. Really heavy duty dollhouse here. You can see what's going on in there. It's like a peacock inside. And then upstairs you have uh, these noble people dancing with a poodle. This is an animatronic dollhouse. All the pieces would move. Unfortunately, it's not currently operational, but they've got it spinning here in a circle so you can actually look at the inner workings. Look at that. All the little different parts and pieces that would go into making all the little figures move there on the other side. Here we have a 
another automated house. It actually has like flat characters. I guess they'd move along a track there. Very interesting. This hallway here, we have a collection of different dollhouses from different periods. German schoolroom there. The little kids. And then here's a French schoolhouse. Uh, wow. Something, wow, something, something's a little different about, uh, about that one. These are early 1900s uh, style houses made for children to play with. You know, some of the older ones were probably way too fragile to let kids play with, but you know, eventually doll houses would become a child's toy as well. Oh wait, there's someone, someone up there in the attic of this doll house. Oh, look at that. These are miniatures of real historical locations. This is the Sparrow's House of Ipswich and the Albion Inn there. You see Pharaoh's department store here. Apparently Pharaoh's is a company that made uh, little miniature props and this dollhouse was designed to show off all the different tiny props they made. You can see the department store there. There's a little ice cream shop on that floor. I think we got baby toys and clothes there. Oh, there's some more toys there up on the top floor. These are carvings by Sylvat Fide who carved uh, sculptures on the tops of pencils, on the lead of pencils. You can see the tiny, tiny horse there. And this one's very intricate. You can see the bird cage, very intricate little bird cage there carved on the lead of a pencil. Here are contemporary dollhouses. Oh, look at this one here. There is a aristocratic poodle people there. Here are some uh, street vendors. We have the map maker there. In the middle we have a guy who is, a, who is an entire restaurant. You can see uh, plates of oysters and cheese. He's balancing on his person. And then a chocolatier over here who's covered in desserts. Here we have a little scene inside of a decorative egg. Closely there, you can see there's like little people sleeping inside the egg. Yeah, some of these are very artistic and cool. This is a apothecary desk. All the different jars of herbs. This is called Remarkable Presence by Jen Urso. You can see these boxes here, cut into little paper dolls. And this is interesting, it's not just a doll house, it's like a doll street. Kind of a street designed in a doll house manner. This is apparently Bristol, England. This massive doll house here. And if you look up in the attic, there's a doll house collection in the attic as well. Also, there's like a terrifying witch in the attic as well. Here's a series of miniatures created by the artist George Stewart. And this is a collection where he focused on people with, or historical figures with nicknames. You have Alexander the Great. There's Alfred the Great. There's Eric the Red. William the Conqueror. And of course, Ivan the terrible. This talks about scale and how that's important to make sure everything looks right in a miniature. Everything has to equal a larger version in size. This is standard scale for a dollhouse is 1 to 12. We see these giant implements here used to uh, to make miniatures. The giant magnifying glass, the glue there. And in this case we see the real versions of those, the glue, the magnifying glass, and then if we look closer, we see the tiny dollhouse version 
And so I guess that they're trying to say, even though they're massively different sizes from each other, they're all equal to the other objects in size. Yeah, I love the variety of different uh, themes here. There's a log cabin. Here is a butcher shop. It's actually the outside is built like an industrial uh, freezer. See the woman there shopping for different pieces of meat. And then upstairs you can see the, the carcasses hanging up. This is the Airplane Cafe. It looks like a, a miniature roadside attraction. So this was actually based on a, uh, on a real place. Some contrast here. You can see this elaborate mansion here. A lot of Southwest collectibles in there. You see the uh, artwork, the antlers. They even have one of those cool uh, antler chairs there. And then this more working class miniature scene called the Barrio Kitchen. This is Casa Bonita, a traditional Southwest home. Yeah, you can see the Southwest theming here in the interior. See some women there having some breakfast. And there is a church. There is a steeple. Look inside and see all the people. Here is the cabin of a cruise ship in dollhouse form. For some reason it has a middle-aged couple there in their underwear. Here is a recreation of a real bookstore. You can see all the actual book titles are all real books. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I guess this is Island Books. There's the children's area right there. This is an Art Deco miniature. You can see everything in the home is like either black or a mirror. Bed there made of black swans. Little uh, sitting area there. Oh, there's some little dogs. It looks like we got a, a uh, aquarium there in the background. We've seen a lot of doll houses, but these are doll apartments. Yeah, each one of these is its own little apartment room. Oh, we see the artist in there. Here's a scene in a walnut. It's called Hares and Bears. You see little teddy bears and bunnies. These are all little super tiny dolls in there. You can actually purchase some miniatures here in the gift shop. A little furniture there. You can see the Eames desk chair there. Little tiny musical instruments. And then some books. You got the Great Gatsby there in the middle. And there's Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. So absolutely loved the uh, Mini Time Machine Museum here in Tucson, Arizona. Just a, a very in-depth look at miniatures, you know, dollhouses, other miniatures. Um, just kind of an expansive collection. They've got the, the traditional dollhouses. They've got the, the you know, the the uh, the fairy tale section was amazing. Just a really amazing uh, experience. A museum here in uh, Tucson, Arizona. But um, it is time. Um, I'm going to try to uh, to make it to uh, Los Angeles area. Um, I'm supposed to be spending some time in the Los Angeles area the upcoming uh, upcoming days. So I'm just going to try. I'm going to I'm going to make a straight shot for it and see if we can uh, see if we can get there tonight. Just seven and a half hours to Los Angeles. Uh, we can make it. I do really love these cactuses. Brief stop here in the deserts of California as I wanted to come by and say hello to the Cabazon Dinosaurs, one of the most legendary roadside attractions in, uh, in California. 
you can actually go inside of them uh, during the day, but I, I did want to come by and see them while I was passing through because I've never been out here at night. You can see this brontosaurus, its eyes are, are lit up, and uh, it appears that the last uh, little while, maybe the last few years, they have been repainting the dinosaurs frequently, I guess almost every season. Uh, they repaint the dinosaurs to correspond with holidays. You can see have an I love you painted on the brontosaurus for Valentine's Day. You can see the T-Rex there is <laughs> dressed up in a tuxedo. He's got the Be Mine Valentine there. And yeah, you can actually enter both these dinosaurs and the T-Rex, you can uh, go inside and go up and look out of his mouth hole. And um, I actually may come back uh, later in the week. I do want to, did want to come by and uh, visit the Cabazon dinosaurs during the day. It actually is a little dinosaur park behind the T-Rex there. I just, I just uh, saw them as I was driving down the highway and couldn't resist but uh, to stop and uh, say hello. All right, guys, if uh, everything goes smoothly, I'll come back and visit you uh, later this week. We made it. We really made it. It's just uh, from four days, managed to get to, uh, get to Southern California from the gateway of the West, St. Louis. Uh, Missouri so yeah finally made it to California I'm gonna be here I'm gonna be here for a while stick sticking to this uh, general area some things I want I've been wanting to do here uh, but before before we go I did want to uh, do an untubing I am uh, sometimes sometimes when I'm up late at night uh, when I'm editing videos or uploading videos you, know, you you go on other websites and sometimes I drift over to Etsy and I just in in my in my sleepiness in my uh, days I'll just order random things sometimes something pops up interesting and then it'll show up later or if anyone else does that where they just do, when they're tired they, they they order things off Etsy and um, this arrived I got this in the mail I actually picked this up when uh, when I was in um, North Carolina, but I was gonna gonna open it for a part of the part of a vlog, but it just never the right opportunity never came up, and so I figured today we visited the um, mini or the 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 the, the mini <laughs> what was it called the mini time machine the time machine mini museum the time machine the mini time machine miniature museum I think I nailed that so I got a uh, a tube a, and I've talked about these uh, in other videos too the the museum gift shop staple the tube of animals but uh, so this is I ordered this uh, weeks if not months ago a tube of cryptids this is the crypto zoology tube and I figured since today we visited a miniature museum and these are miniature cryptids it will be the perfect day to untube them so let's pop this out here what do we what do we got in the tube we'll pull them out of the tube one by one and um okay that's like a little if you can see a little kraken he's actually got a little piece of boat there that he's grabbing onto if you can see the kraken grabbing the boat that's pretty fun big fan of the kraken let's see what else the tube holds okay we got us probably nessie the loch ness monster could be champ from uh, lake champlain in new york if you want to keep to uh, american cryptids but the legendary uh, sea monster there and uh here's a cute little jackalope always a uh, big fan of the jackalope jackalope's one of my favorite cryptids just because he's the, he's one of the, the nicer, cuddlier cryptids. And uh, speaking of cuddly, here's another one of my favorites. We have a fur-bearing trout. Now, as far as my oddities collection, I really want to get an actual fur-bearing trout to put into my oddities collection. 
But that, this will do in the meantime. I have a little, my little furberry trout there. Yeah, if anyone knows where I can get a fur bearing trout, I, I always check eBay and look on Etsy to see if anyone makes them. But I, I can't find a good uh, fur bearing trout for, for my bunker. Oh, we got the we got the double trouble, the tag team here. We got Bigfoot and Sasquatch, if you can see them there. Looks like they're like the same mold. They're kind of in that same uh, Patterson-Gimlin position there. We got Yeti and Bigfoot. And to cap things off, we have the uh, the uh, the one cryptid that we know for sure is real. The one cryptid where there is 100% scientific evidence that it is alive and does exist. And that is the coelocanth there. Oh, beautiful coelocanth. I always love seeing coelocanths. They're very rare. Basically, the idea was a it was an extinct fish, extinct by tens of thousands of years. It turns out it was still alive. It was just swimming around, uh, swimming around the ocean and some fishermen <laughs> caught one. So yeah, we got, I'm very happy with my, my tube of cryptids there. And I hope you guys, hope you guys enjoyed uh, these videos. Um, this trip out to California, it was kind of a whirlwind trip. Like I said, I can't believe it was only four days ago that I was in uh, St. Louis, it seems, like a lifetime ago to me because I, I i don't know i've been i've been on the road pretty hard just pretty much going 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 drove like i said i drove seven and a half hours today from tucson to um we're in the los angeles area i don't even know what city this is to be completely honest with you it's a city that had a hotel i could afford so uh thank you guys so much um we'll be continuing to have some adventures here in california so stay tuned please subscribe to let you know when the new videos come out and, uh, of course, if you'd like to help support the channel, consider donating to Patreon. Uh, $3 more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also, um, uh, the, the pin shop will be down for a little while. Um, I just need to, uh, you know, there's some you know, some issues with uh, just being able to send out pins. It won't be down for long, maybe a week or two at the most, um, but it should be popping back up. I know I've been getting some requests uh, that, that there are some pins that are running out. Um, I do need to make another order of, of pins soon, but uh, I just, I haven't had time. But anyway, all that helps keep this uh, train on the track, this Loch Ness monster in the water and uh, this fur-bearing trout high in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.